K2 Black Panther is considered by many as the best or at least one of the best main battle tanks out there. But just like every other tank, it's not perfect. At the time it was introduced, K2 was surely something, but many improvement plans have led to nowhere and there is a lot of struggle with implementing some of the basic things into the tank. But before we dive into that, a quick word about my sponsor, War Thunder, which is also a game I quite like playing myself. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. The game is free to play on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5 and the previous console generations. No purchase necessary, simply download and play. It is also fully cross-platform between all available platforms. Players on PC and both generations of Xbox and PlayStation all play on the same servers. War Thunder recently had an update, New Power, where new Dagger 6.0 engine was introduced, which brings combat to a whole new level of realism. Naval 3 has been revamped, new Battle Pass system with seasonal rewards has been introduced, new interactive hangar and much more. Use my link to register and receive a bonus, premium tank, aircraft or ship and a 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. On the first glance, K2 appears to be perfect. Uh, L55 gun, decent front armor, explosive reactive armor covering the sides, commander's panoramic sight and so on, but there is much more than first meets the eye. First thing we are going to look at is its protection. While it is claimed that the frontal protection can protect against unspecified 125mm APF SDS, that is not the problem. The biggest issue is the side protection. While there is ERA mounted on the sides of the tank, it leaves a lot to be desired. It should be noted that unlike Abrams, for example, the side protection is a simple steel plate of unspecified thickness, which isn't really thick by the way, so the side protection is pretty much dependent on the ERA. The first problem with this is the ERA's coverage. On the side skirts, which are pretty thin by default, it is good enough, it covers the side from the front to the end of the crew compartment. But side skirts are not the problem. The problem is how the ERA blocks are mounted on the actual hull armor above the skirts. A big portion can be exploited by the enemy fire. To be fair, I doubt that anyone would actually aim and hit there during a firefight, but would you really want to rely on luck? The situation with the turret sides is better. Keep in mind that this area that appears not to be covered is an area still occupied by the composites from the front armor. The turret cell roof is also somewhat lacking. It has ERA covering the entire length of the gun bridge all the way to the blowout panels, and there is ERA on the hatches of the commander and gunner, but there are a lot of empty spaces that could have been protected with additional ERA panels. The roof of the hull also has ERA above the ammo storage. This is not bad since many modern heat projectiles, rockets or missiles can detonate at high impact angles. And this improves the protection of the ammo rack but the biggest issue about the ERA are the ERA blocks themselves. From the blueprints of the South Korean ERA, they appear to be heavily inspired by Contact 1 Soviet ERA, or rather, some different variations of it. They don't seem to rely on a heavy plate being launched, but rather just an explosive filler itself. This is extremely problematic, the way ERA is composed would suggest very little or no protection against tandem-shaped heat, not to mention that they provide absolutely zero protection against APF SES projectiles fired from enemy tanks. Even if this ERA provides some protection against tandem shaped heat, there is no way it is enough to fully stop any more modern one. It might be able to degrade the penetration, which is unlikely but even if it could, the heat jet would still have enough penetration to go through the simple steel plate on the hulls and turret side. This makes the tank's side protection completely inadequate. While we are still talking about protection, I wanted to mention something really important. The tank still has not received the long-promised hard-kill active protection system showcased a couple of years ago. This would have fixed a lot of issues and would make the side armor with ERA adequate enough to stop what little is left from the incoming rockets or missiles, but sadly the tank still has not received it. Funnily enough, South Korea has offered a variant of K2 that has all of those issues fixed to Poland. On the presented model, the tank appears to have composite side protection, which is a great improvement over the lacking ERA currently being used. And uh, see this thing? Yeah, that is a South Korean hard-kill active protection system. That would make the K2PL 
an excellent tank, or rather would have if there isn't another really big problem with the K2. You see, K2 uses a German rank transmission, which is a really good choice for K2, but by the German law they are not allowed to export the tanks that have German transmission. South Korea has been trying for years to develop their own transmission, and several times they have claimed that they are close to finishing it, but each time they end up producing a new batch with the German transmission. They were convinced that they were close this time, thus they offered the K2 to Poland, but just a couple of weeks ago they announced that they haven't developed it yet, and that yet another batch of K2s will be produced using German transmission. This is not a problem for South Korea only, but Turkey as well. Since Germany does not allow exports to Turkey, Turkey is heavily dependent on the South Korean transmission for their Altai tanks, that are still not in production for that very reason. I also wanted to touch on the firepower. When the tank was introduced more than 5 years ago, the L55 gun was an excellent choice. Even the APF SDS they are using, K279, has pretty decent penetration of 700mm. But the Germany has since developed an L55A1 gun and a DM73 projectile, which are set to have 20% increased performance over DM63 fired from L55. That means that currently Germany probably has the best gun in active service. Of course, there is also T14 with 2A82, but the tank is still not accepted for active service. That means that K2 no longer has a gun and a projectile to match the best in the world. Don't get me wrong, it is really good and it is an overkill for North Korean tanks, which are currently the most probable threat for the South Korea, but I'm simply pointing out that for the future, they should consider upgrading the gun, but it's not as important as other issues. Don't forget to check out War Thunder. War Thunder recently had a big update where they introduced a new engine, battle pass, more modern vehicles and much more. If you played the game before, now might be the time to give it a try again. And if you haven't, use the link in the description to register and get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost, and start playing for free. Currently, the main focus is to finish the development of the domestic transmission. Hopefully, after that, we can at least see the hard kill active protection system being installed on the vehicles. K2 has some really, really good things about it, and it's a shame that these issues are still hindering it, years after its introduction. What I'm trying to say is that, despite all of the problems, K2 is still a good tank, and I would really like to see all the issues resolved. That would be all, thanks for watching, if you like my content you can consider supporting me on Patreon, and if you can't, leave a like on the video or subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you all in the next video, have a nice day.